One other thing that I would like to see though is tiering in terms of ammo spawns so that you could go to a specific area and go to farm ammo of a particular type. You wouldn't know exactly which ammo you're going to get but I'd quite like it to be split between low tier, medium tier and high tier and also you can- See that's a good idea and we had this a long time ago. Labs and um, lighthouse for the maps to get good ammo. It was literally a- Labs obviously just a hard map in general outside the cheating. Uh, and you still have to farm good ammo from the bosses or the raiders Fuel. and shit. Lighthouse was very fucking good for getting BP and shit. You always get a lot of people there because they're trying to farm good uh, ammo. 55A1, 56A1, BP, M62, M80 from the rogues. Now they give you like really weird ammo. It's a good idea, but I don't think they'll ever do it. But like, this is the thing, right? The, what Gigabit Beef said here is a good idea, and I agree with it. But the devs won't agree with it because they nerf all of these things due to cheaters farming them. They're so caught up in preventing hackers from farming good shit that they nerf it. And then the average player is what loses out on being able to enjoy that side of the game. You know? And that happens with pretty much everything in the game. So, like, this is a really good idea. I agree. But the devs, in my mind, is just focus on nerfing cheaters. Focus on nerfing RMT, even though it doesn't work. And uh, people won't complain about that shit. It's very weird. So he mentioned a little bit about global limits before, and I understand why BSG wants global limits to be in the game, because they want the game to be about scarcity and not everyone to have access to everything at the same time. But unfortunately, global limits just don't really work in Tarkov, and the ultimate yep. player behavior that you get out of global limits is things that are good being in extremely high demand and people having to camp the traders. Camping the traders is one of the worst mechanics in Tarkov, which effectively means the people who can be online all day can get the stuff when they want, and the people that can't can just never ever get it. It just doesn't make sense, yep. and it's one of the most toxic things about the game. There's also no kind of time zone scaling at all on these. And what he forgot to mention here as well, because of that, people that have full-time jobs and get like minimal time to play the game, they're more encouraged to go buy fucking rubles and bullets from different websites because it's easier and cheap. That's a massive problem, but the devs seem to ignore it. ...mechanics whatsoever, which I think is very unfortunate. If you're trying to buy something, you're much better off trying to do it in the early hours of the EU morning rather than trying to buy something in the evening or in kind of the NA hours evening peak. At that point, your 400 ammo boxes go so much less far because there's so many more players playing at that time. As a start, the quantities for these things really should just piggyback off the active number of players in-game at that one time for that particular reset. He did forget the bots too. There is bots that fucking buy ammo non-stop too. Fantastic. I work 50 hours a week and still refuse to cheat good, bro. That's how everyone should be. But unfortunately, man, that's just not how gaming works, bro, you know? People are going to do it because it's easy. And that's why there are so many hackers on this game. They'll start RMTing because the game is punishing them for playing, right? And they don't have enough time. And then once they start RMTing and they get banned, then they start cheating. It's just like a, a snowball effect, man. So on to Finding Raid. There's a lot of people talking about Finding Raid always, but it's resurfaced again recently with questions of, could we just remove Finding Raid and the game was better before Finding Raid? Now, one it of was. the biggest problems with the whole Finding Raid conversation is that Finding Raid was brought in to deal with certain aspects of the game that were very, very bad before, namely, Hatchlings, i.e. people going in with just a melee weapon, running into high loot spot areas, putting... Okay. Are you ready for this one? Hatchlings were annoying as shit. True. They were fucking annoying. But now we have an even worse, worse version of Hatchlings. AVT, SVT, naked players that camp in bushes with no gear on. And because those guns are so cheap, there's no point in picking them up. And what makes it worse is... They're even stronger because they can kill you. At least back then, the hatchlings didn't have anything to kill you with because there was no guns that were affordable to fucking tap your ass. Now you've got like impact nades, VOG 25s, fucking AVT, SVT, Vepa Hunter. All of these OP guns that shoot some of the best calibers in the game and they're still doing the exact same shit. So for one, Fern and Raid hasn't really prevented hatchlings. It's just made them better. So I don't understand why they don't see that high value Wild. items in their secure container dying and selling them on the fleet trader resales i.e being able to level quickly speed through the trader progression buying stuff from the traders okay another thing about this trader resale if they really wanted to prevent people from buying shit from traders it could be marked specifically bought from trader so that way then if you were to say i bought four salures from therapist it would have a tag uh bought from trader i couldn't just instantly resell it in the flea market because i paid for it from the trader right now let's say i went into a raid and died and then someone got that from me then they could sell it on the flea market right but then what will happen is people will be like oh if that's the case aren't people going to cheese it yes they are going to cheese it but the time spent to cheese that shit is not worth it because you could just run a fucking scav raid 
or a streets raid on your PMC and make three times the money. You got to think about the loading times to get in raid, right? It takes a long time to get in a raid. And then reselling it, you need multiple people to fucking do it anyway. And it's just not even worth your time, bro. You may just go do something else. So even if people did cheese it, it's not even worth your time. It isn't. And then relisting it on the flea market for massive profits. Buying through quests, are you finding raid stuff? And, and I'm sure, bro, they could probably do another system to make that even more complicated for people if they are trying to resell. You need for quests, you could just purchase on the flea market and hand into the trader, just skipping that quest completely with a little bit of money. And early wipe progression, which finding raid has sort of helped to alleviate a little bit. I would argue actually that the flea bans have been more important for this, but finding raid plays some small role. So the problem is that any new solution needs to fix all of these things, and I've done a video in the past trying to take a step back and look at a global view on some mechanics that would allow this to happen, which wasn't the perfect solution by any means, but it shows you the idea of the thought process you have to go through in order to come to a solution that is actually good. Take hatchlings for example, at one point the game was completely plagued with these guys. You'd go into a raid on shoreline and three quarters of the PMC slots would just be filled with people with no gear whatsoever, just sprinting into resort with keys, going to grab GPUs, LEDXs, whatever it is that they could find, put in their secure container and dying. This made the game extremely stale in a lot of raids because there weren't really any people fighting and people were just- And this, this tilts me too because the simplest solution for this is fucking nerf containers. What's so hard about doing that other than their business model? You make it so you can't put any good loot in your ass when you're in raid. The only things you should be able to put in there is meds, ammunition, um, maybe some quest items, right? Maybe. But all of the high valuable shit, you shouldn't be able to just whack that in your ass. And obviously, I know like cheaters and shit will make it really ass if you get something you need. But at the end of the day, bro, if there was a Ledex in the raid anyway and you needed it, you're going to die to him anyway because he can see that it's there. So the result is the exact same. If you got to the Ledex before him based off your spawn, he would have killed you anyway. And if you had that Ledex in your ass, it wouldn't be fun in raid, so it wouldn't work for your quest. So the result is pretty much the same, no? Other than the fact that maybe you'll get some rubles if you sell it. Is that true or no, chat? I feel like it's pretty fucking true. The only thing that you would benefit from if you did get said Ledex is the money that you would get from it if you sold it to traders. But that's not why you want it. You want it for your fucking quest, right? And it needs to be found in raid. So if there is a cheater, he's going to get it anyway. And if he, if he doesn't, he's going to kill you and it won't matter anyway. So the point is, you nerfed the containers and that would have been way better than found in raid. And then hatchet runners would have been limited, like gone straight away. So when I mentioned early white progression a little bit ago, I said that flea bans were more important. And the reason why this is, is- Now he does have some good points, Croatio. I just don't think these guys play enough to understand. I generally think, bro, to understand this game's issues massively, you've got to play fuck tons. Because it, my word or Glorious's word or Landmark's word isn't enough. You've truly got to experience the game over and over and over and over again to really understand why things don't work. It like, I. I don't know. I don't think these guys are anywhere close to like some of the top players in the game. Like I agree with Giga Beef and a lot of what he's saying, but I don't think they've played enough, bro. Are there really issues if you've played 30k hours? That's just an ignorant take, bro. That that's just a terrible fucking take. If you have to play 30k hours to understand the issues are really there, are, are there really issues? Yeah, bro. But people with common sense would figure out very quickly that the market on this game and PvP on this game isn't the way it should be but some people don't have that common sense and that's why some of those people in the community are you know are known and they don't look at the right things bro uh, like not, not many people have common sense man one thing that i will note at this uh, point is that it's a little odd to me that all class 4 armors aren't allowed on the flea market some of them are banned and some of them aren't some of the best like the trooper are allowed but then some of the other rigs aren't allowed i understand why five and six aren't allowed on there but lots of stuff defeats class 4 so i think all of them should be allowed on the flea interestingly landmark's take on this in general was inc yeah, this is a very good take. This is like the most simplest solution that you could do. This, this is like the most simplest thing you could do to improve the game's quality of life and PvP and fix a lot of the issues that the game has without taking up tons of developer time. It wouldn't fix everything, but it would make the game a lot better and it would reduce the amount of developer effort needed in order to make the game better. Obviously, when I talk about what I don't think is good for the game, like the Fen and Raid stuff, that's a massive system that would take a lot of time to rework. And there'd be a lot of things need change on the back end in order for it to work properly. Like, for example, they'd need to make it so you couldn't sell all ammos on flea market, aside from the rounds that are decent. Like, you shouldn't be able to put the best in the slot ammo on the market and buy it from other players. That would break the game like it used to break the game. You could go into a week, the week of a wipe, and you could go kill fucking rogues on Lighthouse, get BP, and just sell it in the market. So anyone that's level 15 gets access to BP, and then every single armor in the game is irrelevant. That shit would take so much time to do. With what Landmark said, the game will still have a lot of issues with like uh, gun balance and ammunition balance and armor balance. 
but it it won't um it won't be as bad because the game will be more enjoyable for like actually running around and fighting people and actually taking a risk to make money on your pmc even just a small example right now i could show you this right this gun exists it costs two teapots it's full auto has no recoil better than most modded guns in the game okay i can go to the flea market filter by ammo i can buy lps lps isn't necessarily the best run in the game but it's good enough to shit on people right 500 rubles around 120 per reset and you can buy it from players on the market with massive supply okay super cheap then i can go buy an svd which is like obviously a better version of the gun well supposed to be right buy an svd mod this bitch up 300k 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 okay 300k now sure you got a 20 rounder i'm sure you can silence this true but it's 60k versus 300k okay watch this shit this is just a uh, just a brief basic example of how balance in this game is is non-existent full auto gun hardly any recoil I have to spam to fucking do that. And the recoil is pretty much the same. Only difference is one gun costs 300k and the other gun is 60k. And this one's full auto, which is honestly even better. Because when you're close range, you're just shitting people. Like, that's just a small example of how the balance team for this game does not exist. And they have no idea what they're doing when it comes to balance in the game. Like, no wonder the ammo in the game's for you know? The spray is good. Oh no, it's good. But like, think about it. Why would you ever buy an SVD when you can just buy this? 60k versus 300k. You could buy like five of these, like four of these in the price of one SVD. Sure, you know, SVD silenced and maybe a little bit better because you can put a scope on it. In certain scenarios, true. But it doesn't matter. If you play in a specific way, this gun's just going to shit on that gun most of the time anyway. Alongside this, increase the trade of repurchase value for the banned items to some sensible amount. Let's say 80 to 90% of the item's original price. Many people were saying... Ar like armors, helmets, guns... If they were going to take the approach to not remove Fen and Raid, but make PvP more profitable, they would have to fucking make those armors like 90% value of what you paid for it. So like, let's say I paid 200k for a, a gazelle, for whatever reason. If I got it back from the player that I, if I killed someone for that, and I repaired it and sold it, it should be selling for 180k. That's how it should be. So that way then, there's a reason for you to go kill players, um, and enjoy the, the interaction of making money from killing people. But you don't do that because you could just scav run, lose absolutely nothing, be rewarded it, rewarded for doing more scav runs over time, get better gear, more loot, and you're promoted to push players because you're spawning in with nothing. You're not losing anything and you're rewarded for making a play. But on your PMC, it's the complete opposite. You're punished for doing that. That's the problem, right? Accusations would go through the roof if PvP was way more profitable. Bro, talk of accusations and cheating uh, topic has been the most blatant overly blown up topic of the game for the past year everyone think everyone cheats and to be fair there's a lot of cheaters but every situation now that's what it is um it, it wouldn't really matter bro like sure let's say pvp is profitable again you are going to see more hackers kill players true but the thing is what you're not understanding is if i went into this raid right now with a zebralo or an alton i would guarantee you i would get cheated on instantly because the gear is valuable so the result is the exact same regardless if that's the case, right, and you did get a raid with no cheater in, and you brought full gear in, you as the player are going to be rewarded for killing the players anyway. So the result is the exact same. If there's a cheat in your raid, you're going to die to him regardless, bro. That's why so many people now don't bring good gear into the raid. But if the gear is profitable and everyone's bringing gear in, maybe it's not going to be as bad because you're going to, like, brush it off. Oh, yeah, that was a shit raid. Next raid, I can go in, kill a player with good gear, and make my money back, you know? I don't have to go around the map and do a specific loot route with keys. And then get ratted by people camping that said key with overpowered guns like the AVT or SVT, right? Everyone wins from that system. And yes, you will see more cheaters, but it doesn't matter. They're going to kill you anyway if you bring good gear, right? Now, I want to take what Deadly Slob said and just analyze this for a second. He said, possible hot take. Tarkov's loot economy is the strongest it's ever been. Finding raid has been a net positive for the game. RMT, hatchet runs, questing progression was just wild. Content. All right. Quick take on this as well. I disagree. I think old Tarkov economy was way better because when when after the first month of wipe people would get their hideout items okay the, the hideout items 
would be inflated. Bulbs would be like 80k and shit like that. People needed those items, so the price went up massively. But after that, the price drops pretty quick. But with this system, I feel like it drops even quicker, bro. Like, from experience in previous wipes, I felt like all of these hideout items were way more valuable uh, in the economy than they are this wipe. And a, a big reason for that as well is because BSG removed a lot of the barter trades that you would get from these said items. Like, for example, nuts and bolts a few years ago were around like 30 to 50k all the time, bro. They, they never drop below that. Now bolts are like 10, 15k. And a lot of these items that are only used for the hideout now um, are literally valuable, like valueless after like the first month of wipe. So the economy, the loot economy is bad because there's, there's not money to be made in these items. They just fall off after people have used them. But before, because they were used for barter trades, they would keep value and keep uh, giving people a reason to go loot bolts, nuts, and all this other shit, right? That's what was good in the loot economy. But now you don't have that. That's how at least, at least it used to be. I used to make fucking good money off that shit all the time. Significant players complained constantly about ammo and armor. Grass isn't greener on the other side. We've played the game with open fleet okay, for a long time. Sure. The changes happened to the market are consequences. I'm pretty bad at explaining shit, so I'm trying to make sure you guys understand. Problems that needed to be resolved. That being said, crafting times are dumb and should be changed. So what's interesting here is that although I actually don't really like Finding Raid that much and never have, the outcome on the game Based. I do think has been good, and it's exactly what Deadly said, it's a net positive for the game. Finding Raid isn't perfect because it introduces some weirdness into the game and makes the system quite unintuitive for new players. I'm just going to invoke- Alright, quick take on this as well. I think Finding Raid ruins the game more because it pushes people to leave the raid in 10 minutes. If you get a good item, the first thing you're thinking about doing is leaving the raid to make sure the value on that item is good. Because if you die, you can't sell it on the flea market because it doesn't have the Fern and Raid status. So what that does, it pushes every single player in the raid. Maybe not some, because some people play the game for different reasons. But a good portion of the players that play and watch streams like to get in, get the loot, leave, make money, kill players, right? That's the idea. Most people that go into the raid, if they get something good, they're fucking dipping, bro. They're, they're not they're not staying in the raid. They're, they're leaving because they want to make the money. So it, it it overall just ruins the the enjoyment of raids for everyone because people are just getting good shit, leaving. The raid starts to get dead. Player scouts come in, then they kill you for being uh you know waiting around, and all the all the good loot's gone because that's pretty much how the game is, right? It's pretty fucking lame, and I think that is a massive part of how uh, raids are ruined. We get like 40 minutes on a raid, and only the first 10 minutes are the most impactful. Unless you're ratting, literally. And obviously I rat a lot now, so I, I do get to get a lot, of, like, uh, kill a lot of players, but it's mainly, mainly bad people that are just stalling for money. Look at the Veritas chart here for a moment, which shows you the decision tree as to whether something is going to be finding rate or not, and nobody can argue that it's intuitive in any way. But Deadly's position is a position that a lot of people find themselves in, not really liking finding raid, but feeling that the outcomes are kind of necessary. One other angle to the whole finding raid thing is cheating, and RMT or real money trading, people paying actual money out of the game to pay for goods in-game. This has always been a problem in Tarkov because it incentivizes people to cheat, to go and get the vast amounts of gear, rubles, whatever it is they need to then on-sell onto people paying real money and sets up a direct economic loop for those people to do so. RMT itself, while annoying, has never really been the problem. It's really about the cheating that's the main issue. Prior to finding Raid, what a cheater could do is go into Shoreline, speed hack or whatever it is, run all the way up to Shoreline Resort, take a Ledex, put it in their secure container and extract out of the map. They then go into a raid with a paying customer in Factory, for example. They go to one of the extracts, they pass the Ledex over, they put it in their secure container, and then they can sell it on the flea market for rubles themselves. When finding raid and a lot of the other restrictions on the player base came in, such as not being able to transfer keys, not being able to drop tons of hideout items on the floor, item restrictions on the actual players, how many bitcoins you can hold, stims, this kind of thing, this incentivized cheaters to do something else. The most prevalent kind of cheat now instead is the carry service. So players go in with a large backpack who are cheating. They this go is good. The carry services ruin the game more because there's always a squad of players now with one of their friends that's wall hacking because they're scared of other cheaters being in the raid that is going to kill them all. That's also a massive effect that comes from the carry services. They don't want to deal with that shit, so they fucking have someone in their squad cheat. And I can, I can say that confidently because I fight a lot of squads in this game and there's always one player that knows way too much fucking info. And I'm sure they probably uh, have that guy doing that on purpose so they don't get cheated on. They're trying to, like, not get fucking killed, right? But then the, the carry service guys go into raid, kill fucking absolutely anyone that goes near the high-value loot. Little dickhead John gets all the rubles for free, goes back to his stash, gets his quest items done, which is even more impactful, by the way. Not many people talk about that. They get in their quests done, bro. That's what they're paying for. 
And then they're also getting their items on top of that, which is even worse. Very bad for the game and ruins raids even more so. With a somebody who's paid, who doesn't have any gear on at all, they then go around the map, they kill players and they loot the whole thing and then they hand over all of the loot over to the person who paid for the carry. So you can see the issue with these two types of cheats. The first type of cheater who's taking loot off the map, like yeah, sometimes they would have to kill people, but normally they just want to extract with as much valuable loot as they can. So what happens to the main player is that they go to various rooms and the map has just not got much high tier loot in. This is extremely difficult to detect for an individual person and who knows, maybe it's just down to loot pools. It's maybe I've just got unlucky. It's very difficult because it's all anecdotal. Nowadays, when people run into these cheaters who are doing carry service, they just get killed because their gear is going to be transferred onto the person who paid for it. This is also much worse for people who go to hit hotspots and those who play a lot and play in a chat kind of mentality. Especially those who bring good gear as well, because those are the people who are probably going to be targeted more likely than somebody who's wearing something not very valuable. So the argument that I've seen is that people would rather fight hatchlings versus carry service cheaters. And by removing fine and rage, you're basically letting cheaters go back to hoovering up items on the map and transferring it to paying customers who sell bro, they do it anyway though i just really fucking find this hard to th th these guys are doing it anyway bro three thousand rounds of bp for fifteen dollars is fuck all that is, that is that is worse than what it was before bro like rmt is so fucking easy bro it's fucking crazy sell these things on the flea market making their lives easier rather than carrying them through the map killing legitimate players Unfortunately, at this point, I do actually see some validity to this argument. Cheaters are going to cheat anyway. It's very, very difficult for BSG to do it, even if they're spending resources and time trying to prevent these people. And so you may as well reduce the impact on actual players, which yes, it might result in an increase in RMT, but it's certainly better than the alternative. But yeah, of course- the, the only player that's getting punished now is the genuine player. You are getting punished on the behalf of a cheater in hopes that the changes prevent them from being able to do what they do. But the real reality of it is, that method of what they're doing gets patched and then they go to a different method and do the same thing again. Of course, the real onus here is on BSG themselves. Firstly, detecting and banning cheaters, which is easier said than done. And secondly, detecting and banning people who do RMT with transfers, which can also be hard depending on how it's done in raid. So if it is going to happen anyway, you know, perhaps it is time to release some of these harder restrictions around RMT, such as passing low to medium value keys and hideout items to teammates, or the number of X valuable item you can hold in raid at once, the number of bags you can have on you, etc. These things disproportionately hurt actual players that aren't cheating and haven't helped with RMT that much seemingly. Another victim of the changes was. around RMT are actually some of the wow moments of the game. Finding a coloured keycard or a ledex is kind of all that is left, whereas back in the day you could find sick cases, weapons cases, bring in yep. thick items cases or junk. Yep, a lot of the fun sucked out of the game because of cheaters and they're trying to prevent them. Like, you go to marked room on uh, customs. You get all these really cool items. You get fucking red key cards, black key card spawns, sick cases, weapon cases, ammo cases, fucking med cases. The list goes on, giving people incentive to move to these high priority areas to go loot those things. But then the argument in people's head is, if those things are in the game, cheaters are just going to farm them. The thing is, bro, they're already farming that shit anyway, because they can see where everything is. Like, you're going to get cheated on. That's the game. But sometimes you're going to be that guy to get there and get the good loot. That's the way it should be. It shouldn't be, oh, you don't have cheats, you're not getting good loot. That's literally how it is. Boxes yourself for extreme high stakes runs. All of this is gone now because of yes, RMT restrictions and that's a bit sad. Tarkov looting has become a game of 10 to 20k item per slot maximization of yep. ruble values on the flea market, yep. which honestly is a bit boring. I don't really enjoy the looting process very much and this is partly Same. why. One final thing about Finding Raid is the criticism that it makes people play scared because of preventing players from banking a win such as a GPU and then being able to fight and retain its Finding Raid status. I think there is certainly something to this, but I don't think it's necessarily the most important one. I mean, we do want to kind of keep some of Tarkov's intensity and so I don't think we necessarily want to get rid of the mechanic that allows people to just go into raid and grab a hideout item or a quest item and then just die with it. More importantly, this mechanic at the moment is what prevents hatchling type gameplay, and I have seen a few people that suggest locking the container, which I'm actually not against, but this does exactly the same thing, except it doubles down on the concept. Rather, The, the only reason why I think BSG hasn't locked containers is pure marketing and making money. I think a good portion of the reason why they have never done it is because uh, EOD and Gamma Container drive sales and it makes them 130 bucks every purchase. I think if they did that uh, a long time ago, people would have been way less incentivized to buy EOD because the Gamma Container was the actual advertisement. People want the extra slot so they can make more money per raid because they're not good at the game yet. And that was the sale. And I can say that confidently because I was that player. 
when I first found Tarkov, I wanted EOD because I sucked ass and I wanted to make more money in my raids so I felt better. So I think that's why they haven't ever done that with the container. That was That's just my opinion though. That's why I think it would have been a very simple solution. Other than finding a GPU and being able to sell it on the flea, you can now only use it in your own hideout. If you lock the container, you now can't have it at all if you die. This would lead to even more incentive to leave raids when you find something good. As I said, I'm not actually against locking it, but attempting to use it as a solution to stop hatchlings in the event finding raid did get removed is inconsistent with people who want to promote PvP and basically does the Go same Beaver. thing as the system now, but has even more of an effect. So this leads us on neatly to the meta of patch 13.5, the camping or ratting meta. You move, you die has become the phrase du jour because it's kind of true. Moving around the map is hard and a lot of this is down to audio. Why people are afraid to move around the map is because you can be heard from an extremely long distance away and once players hear each other in Tarkov typically they stop moving at that point and wait for the other person to run into your sights because it's just an easy kill. First off I think the range of audio is now far too high. This seems to have gotten even bigger with the headset rework and yeah players hear each other from such a ridiculous distance and is the point at which takes her in the game thank you bro people stop moving because why should you you only give away positional information when you do it. You want, you want to the craziest part though about all of the game and the state of it and everything now and all the drama and shit I called this shit years ago with other, other streamers. Me, Smitty, Trey, Toothy. We all called this shit. We said that it would get to this point where people will fucking hate the game because the changes that they want aren't good. That's where we're at. Now the fucking community hates everyone. We all hate each other. We don't like the way the game runs. We love the game, but we hate all these systems that ruin it. The experience. All that shit. We called it, man. We literally did. When you have to push into a silent defender. The like I've said many times, all of the guys that were pushing this, i.e. streamers, without saying names, all of the guys that are pushing these hardcore changes fucked off from the game because they don't enjoy it anymore. What they wanted in the game has come, and now when they play it, they don't enjoy it because they finally realize maybe it was a bad idea and it doesn't work. And us as the players a while ago were the ones to say, this isn't going to work. We were good at the game, so we understood how, it how the game worked. The guys that wanted these changes and they were pushing it were never good at the game. They could never adapt to the, the game's meta. They always claimed, oh, you shouldn't be able to chad. This is ruining the game. This isn't Call of Duty. They just never adapted, ever. They just literally just stay trash the entire time. So like, for example, uh, there's so many streamers in this game that have adapted that weren't good at the time, that are now good at the game because they've they've seen that movement is a big part of the game. And all of these other streamers just never liked the fact that that was the way you improve. Because they're just their, I guess, their uh, biases, bro. Like, it's not just one streamer, bro. There's loads of streamers that were here at that time. Like, loads of them. They're not here anymore because they don't like the changes. They wanted it, but they don't play. There's so many, man. Omni Actual has put together a headset comparison, and he's got a whole video on that on YouTube if you want to go and give it a watch. But there's a table that he has popularized showing different ranges of different headsets. And in the my my take on audio right now as well for the video, um, I agree with what he's saying. I think uh, being able to hear people from far away is an issue, but at the same time, audio is so fucking broken. I don't think it really matters right now until the audio is fixed. Old audio system. Although it was broken, you could understand how it worked and still play around it and not be like, oh, I didn't get audio there because you knew what to expect. For example, I'm in raid right now. Obviously ratting because that's the game now. Um, if if I was on this right here walking around, I wouldn't be able to hear a guy walking underneath me on the old system. So there was two things you could do. You could either not put yourself in a position where you're upstairs where you can't hear people below you, okay? Or... You could be upstairs, hit the prone, and then you could hear everyone underneath you. That was obviously an issue with the audio system back then and it being buggy. But most players that knew this would, it, would be able to counter the bad audio because this is how you would hear people, right? Um, you just stay in the lowest level and you can hear everyone above you. Now audio is so random, you could be standing here and a guy could run across this in front of you and you won't hear shit. And that's because they've tried too hard over the years to try and add new audio systems and rework the way sound works. So I agree with what Gigabeef's saying there. But I do think audio is so broken at the moment, I don't think it really matters. I think the biggest, the reason why people aren't moving is because PvP isn't profitable and these systems punish you for moving. I, I agree though, I agree. The, the range is fucking crazy, I do. But I think, I think that's overshadowed by the audio just not working correctly. The only way to avoid this mechanic at the moment is to oh, stop stress. as soon as you hear somebody and start crouch walking, which at the moment is silent, even though it doesn't sound silent to you. But the problem here is that you can't flank, you can't really move, you can't really do anything. It's hard to even aim down sights without somebody hearing you from 30 meters away. This goes... I know, okay, another thing with this, just thought I'd touch on it. BSG did do a patch fix to prevent this, okay? So 
You ADS, it makes noise. It's loud, everyone can hear it, right? This is a good thing to uh, give awareness to players that are moving around the map if someone's ratting. If you ADS, it makes a lot of noise. There was a bug that allowed you to do this and it would cancel out the ADS sound. It is not working client-sided, but it is working for everyone else in the raid now. But the problem is when they patch this, it is very fucking loud now, regardless of what gun you use. So now, when you ADS with any gun, people can hear you from really far away, which is an issue, right? They've made it... It was broken, and now they've broke it on the other end of the scale, so it's even worse now. Okay? Uh, this. And then what he was saying about the video, if you crouch walk like this, you can be literally 100 kilograms and you won't make noise. This is a bug, and it's been in for like three wipes now. And what I think it is related to is the skill. When you've got max covert movement in this game, this right here, it reduces the audio on all surfaces, making you more stealthy in raid. The last three wipes, um, this hasn't worked, and it's just basically give you max covert level one. It's pretty bad, and it's been like that for some time, but I also have a small feeling the devs have left it in intentionally, so people play more slow. Because I have a strong feeling that the devs don't like people running around and PvPing. That's just my thought, but yeah. One other issue that we should talk about is that players are rightfully scared of running into cheaters if they go geared. Whether anecdotal or not, it is perceived that you are at a higher risk of getting killed by a hacker if you bring good gear, and it makes sense in the context of increased carry services. Unfortunately, as we said before, this is exclusively down to BSG, but until it's proven that the situation is more under control, and exactly how BSG does this I don't really know, but some players will continue to question bringing in expensive kits and instead opt for more of those mid- all I'm saying is, bro, if BSG were active in fighting against RMT and all that shit, as much as they say they are, ammunition and boxes of ammo wouldn't be as abundant as it is on the RMT websites that I've seen. Especially the, the amounts that you can get for the price. It, it just wouldn't be that case. If people were getting banned for buying 3,000 rounds of BP, they wouldn't be cheap because people wouldn't be fucking buying it. They're buying it because it's fucking cheap and they're probably going to get away with it and I doubt BSG is individually checking. Like for now, for example, I could take a thousand rounds from someone in my chat. The, the odds of me being banned for taking those thousand rounds, I, I don't even think they exist. I don't think the, devs, the dev team is enough to monitor that situation. I don't think they have an algorithm where it checks to see if said person has received a thousand rounds of BP. I just don't think they've got the dev team for it. There was a period of time last wipe where I think they were doing it, but I think it was more of a bluff to prevent people to RMT. And what they did was they banned Vibin and Quattro Ace for taking viewer kits of massive amounts of ammo. And what I think that was, was the devs were actively watching the streams of these people and were banning them to set an example so people don't do it in the future. As kind of a, oh look, we are banning people for RMT and don't do it. And I think after that, they just stopped doing it completely. I, I, honestly, because I just can't see how ammo being that cheap is that viable. There's so many people selling shit. So what are my overall takeaways from this video? Bring back the craft for BP and other similar ammo and provide two routes to it. One, the chad route and one, the crafting route. For global limits, if we can't think of anything better to do, just remove it for the time being and keep it personal only. Yep. We'll find in raid, if it's not going to be changed in any meaningful way, at least increase the trader buyback of kits to 90% of their purchase price and yes. include dog tags in that as well. As for finding- That's very good take. This, this is the easiest solution right here. This is the easiest possible solution to make this way better. Raid itself, my revised thoughts are stop hatchlings by locking the secure container in raid because I think this is probably the best. I also agree on this. This needs to happen, but I don't think it will because BSG's business model is selling gamma container. A solution. Trade and resales can be fixed using the algorithm that I designed in the previous video that I still think stands and is good. Buying through quests is easily resolved by just using the finding raid system as it is now and making it only apply to questing. And early white progression yep. can be retained by... I agree. I'll expand on this before I end this video. Ignoring the finding raid side, but keeping the flea bands as they are. As for the current meta, some of this might be helped by the changes that we've just talked about, but I really do think that the audio for the headsets needs to be reduced so that players can move around the map without hearing other people from 90 meters away. And that's basically it. I agree with pretty much everything Gigaby said. Great video. Um, if it were, okay, so to end this video off, this is my solution, okay? Very quickly. They've got two things. They either do what Landmark said, okay? Make it so everything that you get from players when you kill them is valued of 90% of what it was bought for. So it's not 100% return in value, okay? But it's enough to be like, damn, bro. Killing a player is profitable? I'm going to go kill people to make money. W, okay? They either do that, which is probably the most easiest thing they can do, and it would overall make the game more enjoyable for everybody, and encourage less people to sit. Because then there's a wider audience of people with different play styles willing to do different things to make money in the game, rather than just ratting and camping high-priority rooms, right? That's, that's probably the best way they could do it to make it really easy. 
And my other solution is completely rework Fen and Raid, make it for quest only items only. So uh, Fen and Raid only is uh, applicable to those quests, okay? Make it so ammunition, good ammo, you'd have to separate all the good rounds. Make it so you cannot sell them on the flea market at all. You can only get them from the traders via doing crafting or doing all the quests to unlock those ammo. And then also that comes with that, make it so the ammunition is personal and not global. Global limits are terrible and it only encourages more people to buy ammo from external sources. And that snowballs into the whole, if you are MT, more people are going to be incentivized to just cheat from that because, you know, it's everywhere. The advertisements are all over YouTube for that shit all the time. Um, that, that would that, sorry, that would solve that. Make it so you can't sell the, uh, the ammo on the market. And then what, what you would have to do with that is you would be able to allow people to sell their guns on the flea market, allow people to make their armor on the flea market, allow people to sell their helmets and all the other stuff. So if I killed someone in this raid that's got an M4, I can sell that shit on flea and make money it. That's a more complicated system, but I do think that would be a way better version of the game because it benefits everyone in a lot of different ways. And all play styles in the game would be viable then. It wouldn't just be rat and sit in corner and that that it would be everyone else would be playing the game the way the way they want to it wouldn't affect ratting at all people would still do it but people would be able to go around and pvp for money and it would promote more movement so yeah that's that's my opinion on the whole thing and that's my video um the second option is obviously way more complicated than the first option but i do think overall the second option would be better for the game if there was more thought and time put into it but if they want to really fix the game quickly and make it more enjoyable for everybody just make uh, gear resell way more to traders and not just five percent more like whack that shit up to 90 percent of what you spend on it otherwise it won't do it won't work enough uh, but yeah that's it man that's the video and good video by giga beef too